This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, we're going to examine the configuration of the VPN service. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. But before we go into that, I'm going to show you that I have set up a website called private.example.com. It's on an IP address that the client computers do not have access to, but the server does. So to prove this, I'm going to go into my network utility. And first, we're going to look up that private.example.com to make sure that we get a good IP address for it. And we do. We see that the IP address is 192.168.4.1. I'm going to try to ping the private.example.com website. And it will take a little bit, but we will eventually see that there is no response from private.example.com. Notice that all the ping requests timed out. And if we want further proof that we cannot get access to it, we can go in Safari. And I've already previously typed in private.example.com and failed to load the page. It does take a little while. I'll click on it and show you that it doesn't load immediately, but it takes it about a minute to time out, so we're not gonna wait around for that. To set up the VPN service, we need to add the service. We go into the VPN service, and the protocol that I would prefer to use is L2TP. That stands for Layer 2 Tunneling Protocol. We need to put in a starting IP address and ending IP address. This is a bit like setting up DHCP. Then we need to decide on our authentication methods. I'm going to leave it at MSCHAP version 2. And we need to set a shared secret. We can then save those settings. There's also information we can set up for our clients, like which DNS servers to use, and what their search domain is going to save that. Now I want to show you how easy it is to set up your client, but to do that we need to start the service and to make it really easy to set up our client we're going to use server preferences. In server preferences we have the VPN service and we have a save as button here for a VPN configuration file. So I'm going to save that to my desktop I'm going to quit out of server admin and server preferences. All I need to do to load this on my current client system, which is my administration workstation, is double click on it. It will automatically open up the network settings for me and configure everything except my account name. I need to put in an account name that's an active account on the server. And I need to set my authentication settings with the password. And the shared secret has already been filled in from the configuration file that we double clicked on. We can allow or disallow this little icon in the menu bar called the VPN status. I'm going to leave it on. Let's apply our settings, but before we try to connect, I want to make one more change. I want to change my service order so that the VPN is at the top. I'm going to apply that, and we can quit out of system preferences. Let's go ahead and try to connect. Notice that we get a little connecting message, and then it goes to a timer. We have successfully connected to our VPN service. If we go back into our network settings, we can see a little bit more information. We can see the connect time, the address we received, and these little bars will show us if there is any indication of network transmission. So let's go back to our failed page in Safari. I'm going to scrunch it down a little bit and click reload. Notice that the sent bar is now fully populated and it moves up and down more accurately. It moves side to side, showing us how much transmission is going on. And eventually we should see some received information. And there we have our private website completely loaded. So that's how I would set up the VPN service. It's nice to be able to connect to your office or organizational network from a remote location securely. And that's what the VPN service provides us.